Dear Professor Landsbergis, dear colleagues, dear ladies and gentlemen, I'm very impressed uh, of the wonderful speeches of my dear colleagues, of Mr. Landsbergis and Mrs. Sandra Kalniet. We are in the same political family. My closest neighbor in the European Parliament physically is Mr. Landsbergis, and we are very much on the same views on the subjects uh, discussing today. Uh, I would say the speech of Mrs. Sandra Kalniet was so comprehensive that I have to find other aspects to tell to you, and there are a few aspects I just want to share with you today. The great German philosopher, philosopher Hegel has said that without memory of the past, there is no history, no even history. And it's obvious that without memory of the past, there is also no future. If we forget the errors and crimes of yesterday, we are prone to repeat them tomorrow. This is why it's very important that history is being analyzed and such conferences are being organized. I would like to thank from the very heart to the Lithuanian Parliament for holding this very important event here in Vilnius and Mr. Raczynskas and his office, of course, especially. As you know, I am one of those who represent Latvia in the European Parliament. My country just like Lithuania was cut off from the rest of Europe by the Iron Curtain. The Baltic people went through a horrific double occupation. Both the Nazis and the Soviets inflicted enormous human sufferings in the Euro Eastern European countries, now characterized by historians as a bloodland. Some people in the Europe are surprised, why do we not celebrate the Victory Day at 9th of May. On May 9th, 2005, the Prime Minister of Luxembourg, Juncker, thanked the Soviet Union for liberating his country from fascism. But he forgot that this same date, this 9th of May, was beginning of second terrible occupation, Soviet occupation. Not less cruel and barbaric as the one before. The post-war Soviet rule not only destroyed our independence, it seized the development of our countries by forcibly changing their demographics and cutting them off from the world from half a century. The Soviet occupation has left very deep scars in Latvia. We have established a special body to analyze the consequences of a communist rule, the research society of the occupation of Latvia. I am honored to chair the council of this organization, which brings together historians, scientists, lawyers, econ economists, and academics. Our objective is to research the totalitarian regime and to work forwards, fostering the rights of those people who had suffered under the foreign occupation. The society analyzes the losses which our country had suffered. Both human and material losses, our experts had created a methodology to calculate the overall damage inflicted by the Soviet occupation of Latvia, which is why this June I co-organized a very successful international conference, Social, Economic and Environmental Losses Damage Caused by the Soviet Union in the Baltic States, which gathered members of European Parliament and experts from a numerous of countries, including Mr. Arunas Bubnis and Mr. Boris Sokolov, and this was right after the mentioned conclusions of Commission. And we were proud also that we achieved this, that Commission published these conclusions. Of course, assessing damages inflicted by the totalitarian occupation is a difficult, nearly impossible task. Every human being is priceless. 
No methodology in the world can calculate the value of a newborn life lost somewhere in the wastelands of Siberia. For their global statistics, it might be hardly noticeable. But for the mother, it's everything. Human suffering and human losses are the most tragic consequence of the totalitarian rule in Latvia. At the beginning of the 20th century, Latvia's population exceeded that of Norway. Today, it is twice as small. Deportations and persecutions, persecutions put the very survival of our nation at risk. The Soviet system also attempted to change the mindset of its citizens. For 50 years, people were forced to think one, but to think and do other thing. It was a schizophrenic system, very much resembling that of Orwell's Animal Farm. The Soviet occupation has also had a dramatic effect on the economy. Latvia was literally erased from the world economic map between 1925 and 1934, our GDP was equal to that of Finland and Austria, rating among the highest in Europe. Our agriculture sector was significantly more developed, developed than in France. The Soviet collectivization destroyed all of that and turned the Latvian farmers into state-owned slaves. During the Soviet occupation, all Latvian export routes, all business connections established during the short years of independence were abolished. For 50 years, Latvia was turned into a colony, which served the economic needs of the metropole, the Kremlin. Hence, a decline in economic indicators followed. In 1975, our GDP by purchasing power parity had declined to 45 of the Finnish indicator. It is a myth that the Soviet Union made huge investments into Latvia's economy. Our researchers had studied this subject through and concluded that the Soviet investments in Latvia were proportionally even smaller than in the other republics of the Soviet Union. Latvia was used as a colony. It's a most appropriate way to a way to characterize the economic reality of the Soviet occupation. So the most dramatic and long-running consequence of the Soviet rule in Latvia are the colonization and the Russification. Let me remind you that in 1983, the European Parliament adopted a resolution in which it suggested to submit the issue of the Baltic states to the decolonization subcommittee in the United Nations. Later today, Dr. Klombis will present a report about the Russification of Lithuania. I must say that also Estonia, and especially Latvia, was particularly hard hit by, by the Soviet, Soviet program of ethnic engineering. The consequences of it are felt even today. Before the Soviet occupation in 1940, there were 8% of Russians in Latvia, 80% Latvians. By the end of the occupation in 1989, their share, Russian share, had skyrocketed to nearly 50%, including the Russified minorities, or so called Russian speakers. In 1991, majority of them voted against Latvia's independence in a referendum. In 